morning, branches. Good morning, precious saints of God. Precious saints. Hallelujah. God is our Hallelujah. mighty Lord. Praise your precious name this morning, Father. We exalt your name. We exalt you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for gathering our hearts together once again around the table of your word. Thank you, Lord. Lord, and we can come in boldly and worship you today. Hallelujah. Thank you that you are faithful. You are faithful that you are mindful of us, Lord God. Praise your holy name. Praise you, mighty Father. Hallelujah. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Lord, sovereign on his throne today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for pouring out your spirit upon us. We welcome your precious Holy Spirit today, Lord. Receive our worship, Lord. Receive our praise. In Jesus' name, bind all our hearts together, Lord, to fear and admonish you, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let the praises of our heart, Lord God, be acceptable to you today. Jesus, Jesus, glory to your name. Glory to your name, the only name by which we are saved today. Thank you, Jesus, for your great salvation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that your grace is sufficient for us today. Branches, let's sing this song together this morning. Let's just really, really focus on our Lord. Hallelujah.
been created to worship the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're the way, the truth, and the life for us today. Lord God, you are the door by which all men have to enter to receive eternal life. Lord God, touch us, Lord, today. Lord, may we rediscover you, Lord, in beautiful ways, Lord. Speak to our hearts. Lord, speak to our hearts. Jesus, may my pray. Amen. Amen. We're back. Good morning. We're back. You know what? She could be right. It is dark. It's, it's kind of dark today. We are not children of darkness. We are children of light. I'll be right so, back. So, honey, you know what you need to do. Ah, there we go. Fiat Lux. Let there be light. And there was. Fiat Lux. And God provided the light. I just turned it on. Don't you hate it when your hair is all like static? Yeah, I winter. do. I hate it when my hair is all static. <laughs> Well, what hair? Good you have morning. Yeah, hair. exactly. Welcome back to the second week of our ongoing study of husbands and wives. I don't know whether we anticipated it was going to be over two weeks. I thought maybe we would do wives one day and husbands yeah. the next, and then but, kind of move on. But well, wow, um, you have two. You have a week's full. It isn't. In, no, no. I, oh. I'm just going to be. But as you know, all last week, and um, Annie was inter was talking about. Actually, Mostly wives. She was talking about wives for the most part, marriage and, and the role of wives yeah. in, 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 according to the scriptures, according to how God has designed his Has to be creation. done his way. It has to be done his way. Amen. And we talk for three days about wives, which is the exact opposite because it's in the scriptures it's three to one, uh, God speaking about men, men and then, you know, women. So um, we're only going to be speaking with, with husbands today. And the reason for that is... We had occasion to talk a lot about husbands while Annie was was teaching about wives. And, of course, you can't talk about wives without talking about husbands. And you can't talk about husbands. Because they're one. Wives and one. So she is, um, we have already looked at a lot of the scriptures that, the key scriptures that we're going to be talking about today. I'm just mm -hmm. going to, but I'm going over uh, the 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 men part of it, the husband part of it today. The emphasis on husbands. Now, I. I so realize, be good, ladies. I realize. Pay attention. I realize that I'm the token male on this channel for the most part. Praise I mean, God. And, he made and, you and, male. <laughs> amen. And I'm thankful for for Eric and for Jeff. Um, who am I missing? There's one more. I'm missing one more. Oh, Rob. 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 Um. <clears throat> These men of God who, who who have come. And the ones that are coming in. And the ones that are Mike, coming. Mike, Bill, all of them. Um, Hallelujah. And so uh, I, I am very much, I am like Jacob. Uh, and I was thinking about this this morning. I'm very much like Jacob. I, I'm a man of the tents. I'm a man who spends most of my time amongst the tents with the ladies, with the women, talking about the things that women talk about. Now it's... Um, and rather than out hunting with the Esau, so you're a Joseph. <laughs> out hunting with the Esau. Yeah. Now, from what I've seen about the Esau, about the about the males in the church these days, um, and I'm not pointing fingers, and I'm not singling singling out anybody, but um, the church has done a very poor job in in expressing and teaching males what is your role? What is your role as a godly husband? Okay, you've come to faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. What is it you're supposed to do? Is, is you're supposed to, you know, just be a witness for Christ and that's it and just carry on your old marital way, the way your marriage used to be, the way your family used to be, the way work used to be? We know that's not true. We know that all things mm -hmm. are made new, that, that when through, when, right. when we are born again, all, you know, everything old has passed away. We're new creatures new, in Christ we, Jesus. And we look the at things through God's away. eyes and not Amen. through our own eyes, the world, the world's eyes of how we see things. We're supposed to, anyways. And it, <laughs> and it requires, mm -hmm. it requires, you know, uh, re-education. I hate that word. I probably even shouldn't use that. No, our it minds are being us, renewed. Uh, to be renewed and say, okay, and, and asking us the word. question and having the desire to say, mm -hmm. Lord, 
how do you see these things? What am I supposed to do? What is it that you're calling me to do? Mm. Um, we've seen we've seen a lot, but but again, as as I said, um, I I don't get that impression. I've been in a lot of churches. I don't get that impression with uh, um, a lot of men today, which is sad. And 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 I don't blame the men. I really don't. I I think that in some ways we've allowed the culture. Well, in many ways we've allowed the culture to penetrate the, the church, dictate and yeah. dictate what our morality should be, what what we should be thinking about the, the roles of men and women, the standard. And they, yeah. and they are t- and and should we be surprised that they're antithetical, the exact opposite of what God intended? Of course they are, because they're an attack of the mm. enemy, the prince of this world, upon the things of God, the family unit. Yeah, but I do find. Mm-hmm. Especially with all you dear ladies, you dear branches, you are. Um, I I find with women that their faith is, how shall I put? It? It, it, it's it's a lot more. It's a lot real, more real to them. It comes out more in their daily lives as it should with most men. I, you know, I, I, it, there are times when. You know, you meet somebody and you're not a, a male. When I'm talking about a man, you meet somebody and you're not sure he's a Christian because he doesn't he doesn't say anything. He doesn't express. You know, mm-hmm. but with a woman, I find a you know a, a short conversation, you know, less than a minute. I know whether that woman is a believer. I know she is because she expresses it, and this is the way we should all be. And is it any wonder that, that Jesus, God knew this? Which is why he chose women to be the first witnesses to the to the, the resurrection. The tomb, yeah. Because they were not likely to disbelieve it, because because of the, how they're wired and how you know how faith works in in women and it works differently in men. Which is why I think there are so many more things said about men in the Bible. And again, I in some ways I see myself as a Jacob on this channel with you ladies in the morning and and i'm in the tent and i wouldn't rather i I wouldn't want to be anywhere else because i love hearing the way you guys talk about the lord and you express your hearts and your and your faith and it is so obvious that each and every one of you is so in love with jesus and and so in love with god and, and want to please him and you know that you have disappointments in your life because your husbands who should be completing you, as Anne talked about last week, and we'll probably be talking about today, um, to make that one flesh, you know, that a man and a woman cleave to be together and yoked. become that one flesh. That's so crucial to understand about marriage. And we've gotten away from that. Mm-hmm. You know? and, but because God says that we become one flesh, is it, is it any wonder, because Tim talked about divorce on Monday, is it any wonder that when divorce happens in family, mm-hmm. there is so much a pain there's so much uh, uh, crisis. There's and so brokenness much and brokenness, and, and you know, it's the tearing of living flesh. There's trauma there. Bitterness. There's and death there. There's divisions just, and all kinds of things. That's right. I think I said something on Monday. I, I kind of, I, I just want to repeat it because I think it's important. Because it, it came to me while I was doing, I was doing the video, and I believe it's from the Holy Spirit that divorce always rises out of the rubble of a ruined house. And that's why we have to be careful about what foundation we lay. And then Paul said yeah. that we need to, that foundation needs to be laid upon Jesus Christ. And, mm-hmm. and, and never is this more important than our roles as, as men and women, as husbands and wives, and also as mother and fathers. I, I know we've been talking a lot about husbands and wives, but let's remember that the majority of us are also husbands and, and or, or we're also mothers and fathers. Yeah. And, and as Anne said, the number one reason that God designed marriage was for, for procreation. procreation. Top of the list. Top of the list of, of having Go children, of, fulfill, of multiplying and filling the earth. Multiply the land. Which is what the Lord Lord told Adam and Eve that they were to do. Yeah. And so um, it, it's important It's important for us to, to, to lay our marriages and our families on this foundation of Christ Jesus. Amen. And the problem that we're having and the problem we see even even with our you know out the the small flock that we have the small group that we have here that of, of branches and, and like in most of women the problem is that your your marriages are not founded upon this foundation your your lives your personal lives are founded on the foundation of Christ Jesus because as mm-hmm. i said you prove it every time when we we're talking in the chat and the things yeah. that you say and yeah. the things that you express and the faith that, and the witness that you are 
but I, I know there's a great sorrow out there amongst the branches, and it's not just with us. It's throughout the whole body of Christ. There's a great sorrow amongst women right. that their husbands are not being the godly men that God has called us to be. Mm -hmm. So today I'm going to talk about husbands. Well, even even Sunday morning, Pat, you know, mentioned in the list of things that we're to pray for in the church is marriage. Marriage. As Marriages. well, you know, because people are suffering difficulties. And we talked about, you talked about last A lot of it is selfishness. Week. It's selfishness. There's no way the divorce rate should be the same as the world and the church, but it is. Mm -hmm. You know, we've gotten away from what that is. And, and uh, yeah. pe people will say... You know, when they become, when they get married, their mothers and uh, become husbands and wives, they say, well, I, I, I don't know. There's, there's, there's no instruction booklet. I don't know how to be a husband. I don't know. You know, I have to learn as I go along. And I believe, you know, I used to believe that too. And, and same with being parents. I, I don't know what it's to be like a parent. I know what my, my parents were Just like. got to get out the scriptures. <laughs> but, you know, and, and for a long time we said there's no instruction book. Well, guess what? There is an instruction book. And. I did. I wish I had known when I was a younger, when I was a young father, when I was a new father, of what it means as a man. Mm. Uh, but I wasn't serving the Lord then, as the majority no. of people in the you world. So Christ. you just. So you say, well, I don't know what to do. I don't have instructions. Well, yes, you do. You do have. We have. We have great instructions. And I'm. I. I. I sure wish I had read these passages and known these passages when I again when my children were young. Um. But. I have been blessed because of my You're wife, stuttering. Huh. My wife, my <laughs> Proverbs 31 wife. No, I was trying to think about how to... That, oh. And that's why we, right from the beginning, made a, a, a decision, a conscious Commitment. decision that Christ would always be the center of our relationship, yeah, yeah. that there is an instruction booklet, and he tells us how to deal with these things that rise up in marriage. Well, the important thing for us um, was that we each, each of us as individuals maintained our relationship yes. with the Lord. Yes. You know, that I was maintaining it and Christ was first in my life. You weren't my savior. And Christ was first in your life. You and, know, and and through that union yes. with Christ, we were able to stand on the rock. Because if you don't when, when those waves came in. <laughs> because if we don't, if you, if, you're, if your own individual life is not mm. founded on the foundation, on the cornerstone of yeah, Jesus Christ, yeah. when you do marry, when you do come together with somebody mm. and their life is not. Or they fall away. Or they fall they, away. Maybe, they may married. start off okay. What are you? But then they fall away. And then you start issues. And why is that? Well, what did Paul call that? Well, in Second mm. Corinthians 6, 14, what did he say? You are unequally yoked. Mm. And talked about yoke last week and, and quite the yoke of marriage, pulling together, being in unity, mm. pulling in the same direction. The, the furrows can do much that God more designed than has one. called us to do. But if one person yeah. is only pulling that plow and the other one is just dragging his feet, how much difficult? Harder First is of it? all, the, the, the plow won't move, nothing will get done. And I know that some of you are very little. And some of you, and it breaks my heart that some of you are in this position where you are on equal deal. You love your husbands, but you are, and that's, and as I've shared with you, it, particularly the last few months, the Lord has had me praying for all your husbands, the prodigal husbands. Dee brought up the prodigals, and yes, that we've been praying for the prodigals, and that's the theme for this year. Yes. A prodigal, I, I'm focusing on prodigal husbands rather than prodigal sons. Because I know it is the desire of a lot of you in your hearts that your marriages be healed, that your marriages be made whole, that they, it becomes this one flesh that God talked about. So that you do have the joys and the blessings of marriage mm -hmm. that you were told that the Bible says yeah. is ours if, if we, we do. If we do these things that we've been talking about, what mm -hmm. Anne was talking about last week. And so, so Anyway, mm -hmm. um, I had the opportunity uh, uh, a couple of months ago to um, give some counsel to um, a my brother. a brother, my friend who just got married, a brother who just got married, and of course, like everyone else who's newly married, like what do I do? What what, what do husbands do? Like what do we? What is he didn't expressly ask, but what does the Bible? What does God expect to us as men? 
And so I was doing what Ann did. I, I pulled together a lot of these scriptures that Ann talked about last week. We'll be talking about them again today. But I found something that I myself had done for myself after Ann right, and I that, got married. That was God-ordained. It was. I when, had, you, when you found that little book. I hadn't seen this thing in years, and I opened it up, and I'm sure it, it was a God-ordained. I'm pretty sure yeah. the Spirit led me here. And and I I opened up this thing, and it was a, a note or, or notes that I had made to myself. This This was about a year or two into our marriage. And these were things that um, uh, I, I, I had started to read in the Bible because when I had been married a year, I had only been saved about a year. I got saved in April of 1997, and we got married Three in August later. of 1997. So my walk with Christ and my walk with my wife are kind of together mm -hmm. as far as the timeline goes. And so at that time, I was building that foundation in my own life, which we were just talking about. And I was starting to read. I was trying to find all of these, these verses about, of <laughs> about husbands, husbands mm -hmm. and wives, but husbands particularly. What was I supposed to do? And, of course, I was, <laughs> I, I was, I was quite brokenhearted to find out that I hadn't been doing probably most of them mm. because I'd been following the old adage of the world. You know, there's no instruction booklet. You just make it up as you go along. No, you don't. God has a plan for it. God has a way to do this. So I had made this, this list based on the scriptures. So a lot of what I'm going to talk about today, Anne's already referred to a lot of these scriptures already. I'm, going to, I'm just going to talk about it from the male point yeah. of view. But from this yeah. list, I had four major topics that I actually had written down. And I entitled this these notes that I had given to myself, I entitled them, my wife and her needs. Hmm. And I split it up in these various categories because it, it, you know, my wife, like all of you, like is not one dimensional. She's multidimensional. She has oh, yeah. a lot of needs. Mm -hmm. She has a lot of desires. Mm -hmm. um, one, and, and just before I start, I, it, it just occurs to me, one of the things that I pray for each and every one of you is, is when I'm praying for these prodigal husbands of yours, that they return and serve the Lord first and foremost. They come to faith in Christ. And, and then when that comes and they get changed, then they will see what the Word of God says. But what I, as far as I pray for you, what I pray is I pray Psalm 37, 4. And Psalm 37, 4, that if you says it, it if you delight in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, mm -hmm. that can mean a lot of different things, but in this case, I know what most of your desires are when it comes to your marriage. Those of you who are not married, I know what your desire is because God's put that desire in us. Yeah. And because you all delight in the Lord, I believe that the Lord is going to answer our prayers Amen. when it comes to our husbands. Not my husband, but your husbands. <laughs> he already has for me. <laughs> and he has. So anyway, mm -hmm. back to this um, that I sent to my friend. I said, I just found this, and, and, and I think this would be very helpful for you. And, and I said, my wife and her needs. And I said, there was four categories. The first one was physical. I wrote down physical. And I wrote down, yeah. okay, well, what does that mean, physical? Like, like physical. What, what does my wife need physically from me? Other than the obvious, which is the intimacy of marriage, which we talked about, you know, sex. pleasure and sex. So, <laughs> you know, that's something we both, that's a blessing we both get out of, mm. out of marriage. Mm -hmm. um, and it is a blessing for us. Yep. But what, it, for a woman, as you all know, because I know I'm speaking mainly to women, it's much more than that for you. And so I wrote down she needs to be hugged. She needs to be caressed. She needs to have physical massages, particularly her back and her arms. <laughs> now, that may be different for, you know, where those areas are for you guys may be different. But, but the physical her, touch. The physical yeah. touch. And specifically in specific areas where she she, she loves it when I when I massage the top of her right here in her muscle. <laughs> it tickles. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't know that until we got married. And then, you know, she, and she told me this is what I mean. So that's paying attention to what your wife is telling you. About her needs. And her needs isn't just you need to go out and, and provide for the family because the Bible, like the world tells us that. Never mind the Bible tells us that. We know it's important, but you need to do more than that. When you come home from work, 
you need to be paying attention to me. Each object doesn't end. It doesn't end there, you know. <laughs> you just enter into an, another one. <laughs> and and so that's the easy part, the physical part, because a lot of times I know you will share it with your, with your mates like this, you know. And, and if you've been married for any length of time, he discovers it anyway. Now, he doesn't always do it because men are bad for that. You know, and sometimes you say, I told you I like this. Why don't you do this? Blah, 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 blah. That's on the man. That's not on the woman. If you know what your wife likes, then you should be doing it if you love her. And we'll be getting into that, into the scriptures about that. The second one is her emotional needs. And you women are very emotional. We well, can be. Well, you can be, but I think women are far more emotional than men. Mm-hmm. And Definitely. I, I I had written, what she needs most is a godly man, a husband, walking in the mm. spirit and producing tangible and real fruit towards her and our children. Mm. It wasn't just her. The, the kids were involved with this too. They were younger then too. But I was the father. And I wasn't, and this is why I said earlier, I wasn't just a husband. I'm a father as well. All right. The interesting thing about that is, it's funny, when we have children, and I'm sure oh, most of you all have children, when we have children, we tend to think that I'm, I'm, going to be a hus- I'm going to be a father for the rest of my life. When my, my kids grow up, I'm still going to be a father. My, and you, if you're a you know, your woman says, I'm still, I'm going to be a mother all of my life because I've given birth. I am going to be a mother. And that's true. Funny how we never say that about being husbands and wives when we get married. I'm going to be a I'm going to be a husband the rest of my life. I'm going to be a wife the rest of my life, because this dark looming shadow of divorce is always there. Yeah, we're, and, we're and the st- attitude towards yeah. people with, about we're, marriage. We're still mother and father, but thank God they leave the they do. roost. They do. They leave the roost. <laughs> well, our <laughs> eldest kids are forty years old. Forty one. They're going forty two this year. They're still our sons. And our daughters. And that we still interact with them and we still give them. Sometimes you know, they come back home. Sometimes to they roost, come back home. Well, we have a daughter who's with us now. Mm-hmm. We're still mother and father to her, right? Yeah. So we will always be mother and father. When you give birth to a child, two of you, you will always be that. I'm just saying. Just our roles. I change. wish we had that same attitude when we were thinking about mm-hmm. each other as husband and wife. Yeah. Um, and I also wrote, I need to deny myself. My own needs and my own thoughts about how things should be. When she, not not all the time, I need to deny myself when I know she's going through a crisis. When I know she's struggling. Mm. I need to put any all whatever I think and everything aside and be there for her. And unfortunately, men are not good at that. And this is... Sometimes we're... You guys are like, just smarten up, just pick yourself up and... Some, some men are like that. <laughs> but again... Come and, on, toughen up. And this led to, <laughs> my, this led to my personal uh, investigation and voyage of discovery when it comes to husbands. But of course, to me, the most important advice that God has given us through the prophet, or through the Apostle Paul, when Anne, Anne talked about it all last week, we're going to talk about it a bit today, is Ephesians 5. A godly husband I call an Ephesians 5 husband. And why is that? When I say you need to deny yourself, you all probably mm-hmm. thought about that verse, that the husbands were to love their wives and give themselves for her as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. And Anne talked about how the marriage is a reflection mm-hmm. of the, the, the church the of church. Jesus Christ, it what is. it's supposed to look like. Yeah. And we, as husbands, are take, in our own families, are taking the role of the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, we must, we must do what Jesus said. A student is not greater than his master. And if Jesus said, the Son of Man came to serve and not to be served, mm-hmm. we need to do that. Yeah. But starting with our wives, that's the starting place. We're to do it with everyone else. But if you're doing it for everyone else and not your wife, guess what? No that, blessing for you. No blessing. That's not written. God, hmm. that will just get burned up. That is that is just a non starter there. Yeah. And I need to I need as a husband and as I need to take her needs and I need to take um her desires seriously. Because as we said in First Peter three, because we're co heirs. Mm-hmm. And what affects her should affect me, and yeah. what affects me affects her. 
but a man is is called is is I think is going to be account, called to account for that. And again, this all overarching things that we were talking about marriage. Remember, especially when it comes to men, we talked about it on Sunday night. Anne talked about it on communion for Sunday night. Mm. We always must remember that at when we go the way of all flesh and we stand before the Lord, we will have to give an account mm. to God for everything that was said, everything that was Each done. Of us, yeah. And in the light of God expected you to be this kind of husband, what kind of husband were you? And, and this is, I find this is where prodigal husbands don't, they are, uh, they don't realize the danger they're in. Mm. Because they don't think about it, because they don't think about it that way. You're going to, whether you believe it or not, you're going to have to give God an account for doing what you did, for not being this Ephesians 5 husband, you, for not looking after your family, for not looking after your wife. God expects you. He entrusted his wife into your care. This woman into your care. You're going to be accountable, not her. You're going to be accountable. And you're not going to be able to get away with it because Adam never got away with it when he said, Lord, it was the wife you gave me. The blame game. That's where it all started. We're ladies. never going to get and we talked about that, yeah, we talked mm. about that on uh, Sunday night. Mm -hmm. uh, and the blame game, as Ann said, you're not going to get away with that. Um, the number three is spiritual, her spiritual needs. Mm. I need to be the priest in the home. I need to be walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. And I, and I should be, and Paul admonishes men to this, we should not be, and Peter did too in 1 Peter 3, we, I should not be uh, holding, lording my position over her head. In other words, I should be, you know. It's not a military submission. It's not a military submission. No, I'm not the king, and Do she's she's else. not my subject. Like that old yeah. joke, the guy that went to church and he came back, and his wife said, "So what the pastor talked about today." He's he said he talked about where he said, "I'm the head of my household. I'm the king, and you're nothing." And she said, "Big deal. You're the king and nothing." <laughs> um. I must love her, again, going back to Ephesians 5. I must love her as Christ loved the church. Men do not understand this. We don't understand this kind mm. of sacrificial love in many ways. This kind of 1 Corinthians 13, to give ourselves because we're so, used to, to the, we're so used to the world telling us that we need to be the boss. Well, you know, not nowadays because there's attack on, on uh, masculinity throughout the world right now. Uh, on males in general, mm -hmm. um, but we need we yep. need to be Jezebel able, is rising up. Jezebel is rising mm -hmm. up. Spirit it's is Jezebel. risen up. Huh. This is something that you need the Holy Spirit to teach you how to do this. No man right. can. I can't teach you how to give yourself for your wife yeah. as Christ gave Himself for the church. The only only one only the Lord's example. Going and reading about that, reading what the Lord said, allowing mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. To bring that understanding and that knowledge into your mind, into mm -hmm. your heart. This is the way you need to treat your wife. This is the way you need to love her. And love her isn't just getting up and getting her a coffee. I mean, that's part, that's the expression of, of your love. But, it, you know, don't think that just because you get up and you give her a coffee and, and, you know, you might take the garbage out for her. Or maybe you'll go out for a date night or something. That, you know, see, I'm proving I'm loving her. Yes, that that is physical love that that's you know emotional love but that's you're not loving her as christ's love you're not loving her sacrificially and it, it's it's a very difficult thing and it's something again it's not something i could teach you it's not something i could i i can share it with you but mm -hmm. the holy spirit you need the holy spirit to tell you to show you to put it in your heart mm -hmm. this is what it looks like this is what you need to do yeah. And the Holy Spirit will give you, again, going back to Psalm 37, 4, God will give you the desire to love your wife That's this way. That's where it's at, the desire of the heart. Exactly, because you don't have it naturally. Mm -hmm. you, it's something, it's... it's we it, are inherently selfish So Exactly. Creatures, Sin right? makes us inherently <laughs> selfish. That's why we need Jesus. You know, and, and again, the important yeah. thing of, of what happened there in Genesis 3, you know, it's very illuminating that Adam, because men are still saying the same thing Adam did, how many, how many millennia ago? Yeah. I, it's not my fault. It's the wife you gave me. It's your fault, ultimately. Not. 
you know. You made her. <laughs> and people, because, as you've heard us say, because this culture and this society tries to make men, make people in general, sorry, not just men, uh, victims. It's not your fault. You don't need to right. take responsibility. wrong -o, again, you are all, wrong -o. we are all going to have to give an account to God for whatever we do, say and do. You know, and God, one, he's not going to put up with that victimization. It was the woman you gave me. It was the world. It was my boss. It was my kids. I never got a fair shake. It was my parents. I had a lousy upbringing. You know, sorry yeah, for that. This happened to me and this that happened, happened to me. To, this happened to me. God's not going to yeah. let us get away with that. And this is something we need to, to learn. Um, and I, I have, I read, um, about this, this uh, loving her as Christ loved the church. We're just going to read, because Ann, Ann read this a few times last week, but yeah. it's always worth, especially when it comes to men, this, <laughs> this is what we, we yeah. need to hear. But, mm -hmm. of course, me saying that, now I'm talking about wives, because she read this mm -hmm. last year, Ephesians 5, 22. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, and is Christ yeah. is the head of the church. His body and is himself its savior. Until a man gets that knowledge, until he gets that understanding mm. that I am in my own household, I take, I, I am a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. That my wife should be able to see Jesus in me. Yeah, the character and of Christ. The character of Christ. And if she doesn't, that's your fault, buddy. That's my fault. Especially if you know and what did James and I think James one twenty seven says if you know what what's right to do it and you don't do it, that's sin. Yeah, that's sin. But at the same time, you know what? We're imperfect mm -hmm. beings. We're gonna fail, and so that's why repentance is so important. I was gonna say that's the reason for repentance. Yeah, yeah. It's it's okay to fail. It's okay to to not do these things. But you have to be like the prodigal son. You have to come to yourself and realize, whoa, I have sinned against God and my, my wife. My wife. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you come to that. Have that's that good. tender heart. God will, God will forgive you every time if you come to that place. That's, yes. where, that's why Peter said to, to Jesus, we how were. often should I forgive my brother? Yeah. Seven, seven times seven? He thought that was magnanimous. Mm-hmm. Because I think Hebrew law in those said only seven times, or, or I think four. We, we talked about it a few months ago. I can't remember. But, mm. but Jesus said, no, 77 times seven, which is, you know, as long as you come in the right repentance, the right frame of mind, the right repentance, right. as long yeah. as you come, yeah. then um, you will be forgiven. Amen. You will be forgiven. Um, and then the fourth thing that I'd written down, I wrote down social slash intellectual. So I said, do the things, and this is, again, notes to myself, notes to husbands. Do the things that she likes, not do just what I want to do. She's happier, if she's happier going for a walk in the park or in the woods than going to a movie or a sporting event, then you go to the woods, even if you don't like it, because it's something that she loves, and you want, to, and she wants to share that with you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and vice versa. And vice versa. But I think it's it's the, yeah. the onus is on men because there's, you know, and I'm speaking from personal experience when I'm saying all of these. So uh, that we're the ones I I I believe, and maybe I'm being biased because I am a man, but I get my own experience. We're the ones that need the most work. We're the ones that need to, mm. to really, and I think that's why the know. majority of <laughs> this advice is to men because we're kind mm. of, we're kind of set in our ways. This is the way we're going to do it. This is the way men do it. We're going to do it that way. Well, instead of saying, well, how does God want it done? How does God want us to act here? I think because you're born first mm -hmm. or created first um, as leaders, you know, that dominion was given to Adam first, and so you naturally want to lead. It's a natural thing in you, but that can be polluted where you misuse that authority, and that's where God has to uh, move in those areas yeah. and, and train you up. Huh. 
And we are, and make no buzz. That's why we train our children up in that way as well. And the admonition of the Lord. And if yeah. we are children of God, we too will be brought up in the admonition of the Lord. And for yeah. me, these last 27 years has not only just been learning to live day by day mm-hmm. with my wife, but learning God's way of doing it. What right. is the most yeah. successful way of doing this? And again, mm-hmm. just going over it, unless you have that foundation of Christ Jesus mm-hmm. on you, you know, the house, you're built on sand and the house is going to fall. And I don't know if you've ever wondered, I, I, I've always thought is such a small little phrase at the end of Matthew 7 where Jesus where Jesus is talking about building of houses on rock and building on the house of sand but the house that gets built on sand when it falls Jesus and Jesus says great. this thing that great is the fall of that house mm. again I can't think of anything worse than the fall of a great house through divorce and that's why right. I wrote last yeah. week on on Monday divorce always rises out of the ruins of uh, or mm. rises out of the wreckage of a ruined house and I think that's one of the things that that can apply to in Matthew seven. Great will be the fall of that house. If you if it ripples, it ripples. It yeah. affects so many people, and it affects you. You know, you may. I I've been a. I've had. I've been divorced. Mm. And I at the time I thought my wife and my ex wife and I were. She was not saved, and I wasn't saved, but she was uh, infidelity. She left me for somebody else. But we were careful to think, okay, we're, we're going to separate, but we're, we're going to make this as easy on the kids as we can, make them understand that it was not their fault. As, and mm-hmm. we did. We took every precaution. But you know what? Mm-mm. My kids grew up still believing that. Still, that they, they knew hurts. intrinsically yeah. that it wasn't right, that it yeah. should, you know, the family should have stayed together and wanted to stay together. And, you know, in their own marriages, they, I don't want, I don't want this, it to happen to me. For two of them, it has happened. But mm-hmm. again, that isn't necessarily the example in the home. Although that aided it. That isn't what they wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> we could go into all the generational curses as well, but. If, if you, if there's a, a, a pattern of divorce in your family. Seek the Lord on that, because sometimes it's a generational curse that needs to be broken off. And sometimes it is a generational yeah. curse. Mm-hmm. There's some foundational things that have to be set. And, and I don't, and I don't doubt that through yeah, for a lot yeah. of families. Now, just because yeah. your parents divorce doesn't mean you will. And it, but, or you have to. But if you yeah. have a, if you have that, and most families do, if you have that pattern of divorce, you can break it off. Right. Yeah. <laughs> through the power of the Lord. The power right, of his spirit. Yeah. You can say no. Mm-hmm. And this sort of goes back to what I was saying earlier about um, I find it funny that that we consider ourselves parents for life, but we never consider ourselves husband and wife for life. And God intended that for the both. Vows, right? right from the Our beginning vows. that both were to be. Till death do us till part. death do us part. And what God has, as we mentioned last week, what God mm-hmm. has put together, let no man break apart or tear asunder Mm -hmm. because marriage is the work of God. You know, you may not, we may not believe it. And and of course, this is maybe something we can talk about on the round table, but because I know I've asked myself this and I'm not sure we're ever going to get a definitive answer this side of heaven, but we've, we've seen so many marriages. We've probably been in these marriages. You might be even currently in a kind of marriage like that, that is empty, is loveless, you wonder why why you're you're an unequally yoked you have you you just feel so separate and distant from this person whatever <coughs> we have to ask ourselves god why do you allow why do you allow marriages that you know and tim kind of touched on this on monday why are you allowing marriages that you know are going to ultimately fail which Sadly enough, it's, it's yeah, 50%. it's not his now. will, but he gives choices. But it's in not that, his will, which is in those marriages, and it's unfortunately people choose the the wrong things. That's right, and that was probably behind mm-hmm. the Pharisees' question to Jesus: Why, mm-hmm. if if that's the case, then why did God give Moses us the right to give a certificate of divorce mm-hmm. to our wives? The hardness, right? Notice how wives couldn't get a certificate of divorce for their husbands. <laughs> husbands had to do it. 
They just hired hitmen. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but it it. it, it Paul calls marriage. When we're gonna we're gonna deal with this. I thought I would get through this today, but I'm not. So we'll do this tomorrow, which is good. Thought so. Which is good because we had one more day we had to fill this week. Mm-hmm. So maybe this is the Lord's will. But just we're, we're gonna end yeah. this here. But I just wanted to share with you these things. But it, it's interesting because um, what was I going to say, honey? Before I was so rudely interrupted. Something Tim said. No. Something Tim said. Did did I say that? Something Tim said. I've often wondered why, um, and, and you've met couples and people, you know, who are obviously like, why are you, why are you even married? And even in the church, I saw a lot of marriages. I saw a lot of couples together mm-hmm. who should shouldn't be together. Tim kind of mentioned on Monday as a as a as a minister of the gospel um, when he sees when you see that two people are, you know, should it's obvious they shouldn't be together, but they're insistent. You should say something. You should say something according to the Word of God. Um, and that's part of marriage counseling, which is why marriage counseling is kind of important. Some people said that about us. They said, ah. There are a lot of people who said we would never make it. They, we would, yeah, because of all the kids and everything yeah. and eight kids and joined family. and But yet, 27 years later, going on 27. Here's the grace of God right before you. <laughs> and I know some of those, some of those who said that got divorced themselves. So mm. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. this, this is the importance of making Christ the center of your marriage. That's right. I think, right. and again, go right back to the we beginning. We boast in the Lord. Huh. Yeah, we boast in the Lord. Mm. I'm going right it's back to the beginning. Him. I don't think it's a difficult for women to put Christ mm. at the center of their marriage, knowing they have to do it. I do think it is difficult for men. I don't know why. Because of maybe because of the influence mm-hmm. of the world, maybe the way that we're wired, I don't know, but I do know from personal experience that unless mm-hmm. Christ is the center of your own life and the center of your own marriage, and He's leading, guiding you to be this Ephesians five husband, your marriage will not survive. I think the enemy attacks men in areas. That are different than the women, oh, than absolutely. the wives. Absolutely, he yeah. does. Absolutely, he, he gets does. the wives to be nagging, <clears throat> yeah. the complaining, yeah. you know, uh, spiteful, yep. and all those things, right? And of course, that just no, no, now no, their no motivation wives. is to bring their husband into you know the fold to bring him in. You you need to be this godly husband, of course, not realizing by that kind of attitude, all you're doing is pushing him farther away. Yeah. We need to lead by example, as we talked about, yep. as women. And like, like Peter said in yeah. 1 Peter 3, the quiet spirit that God loves. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the word that was actually yeah. used. Yeah. Um, that gentle, quiet spirit. The gentle, quiet spirit that God Chased prizes. prizes. This is precious to God, I think, is the way. It's a precious thing to God yeah. for a woman to have this quiet spirit. And that's mm-hmm. the adornment. That's what makes her beautiful. That's what draws the men that's in. That's what draws men. Is that quiet when we spirit. praise them and we... But that quiet you know, spirit we, can also bring in the abusive man who thinks now that he, that he can lord great. it over his wife. I have them submitted yeah. now. And she's not going to respond. But the fear she's of not, the husband in them. She's not going <laughs> to fight back. This horrible things to be talking about. I, I can't think, every yeah. time I hear of a woman who is being, I don't care what the motivation is. Every time I hear that a man is, is abusing, physically abusing a woman, mm. I, get, I get righteously angry. No man should be doing that. You know, yeah. whether, you're a, whether you're a Christian or not, no man should be doing that. Yeah. And again, one of those things we will be accountable for. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, Lord, for your word, and yes, spe- specifically on this topic, Lord, that teaches us as Hallelujah. men how to be godly husbands, how to be loving husbands, yes, how to be the Christ to uh, to our wives, Lord, to, to show the love of Christ to them, Jesus. to love them, and give ourselves for them. And Lord, this is this is the kind of sacrificial love, Lord, that that only comes from you. Yes, Lord. And I pray that, Lord, that you will teach each and every man yes, out Lord. there, Lord, what it is to love his wife sacrificially, Thank what you, it Jesus. is to be a godly husband. And, Father, and I pray for all those yes, prodigal Lord. husbands out there, Lord God, and you know who they are. Yes, you know Lord. where they are. You know why they Hallelujah. are. But, Lord, they are never too far from you that you cannot reach them. 
David said, there is nowhere I can go Amen. where I can escape your spirit. Because if I go to the highest heaven, you are there. And if I go down to the lowest depths of Sheol, you mm. are there too. Or in the depths of the ocean, you are everywhere. You, and they cannot escape. So I pray, Lord, that you shall you bring forth, you send the Holy Spirit to bring conviction yes, Lord. in the hearts of these men. Yes, Lord. To bring them to themselves, Lord, that they would say that Help them in even in my father's Lord. house, even his servants have enough Help to eat. Them, and here Lord. I am starving. I will go Lord. back and I will hire myself Help out as God. my to my father, as one of his servants. And I pray, Lord Jesus. God, for the sake of these dear women. Lord. Lord, that you will speak to them while they're in the pig pen, Hold while they are in the up, far country, Lord. and bring them back, Lord, and Hold bring them up, back Lord. not only to Lord. you, Father, but, but by bringing oh, them Lord. back, you bring them back Look to their wives. Lord, you Jesus. bring them back to their loving wives who, who are cried, waiting, who are praying, Lord. who desire to have the godly husband that the Lord has promised them, that they would once again be equally yoked. Be once again, they will be one flesh. And Lord, that they would they would experience the blessing that marriage is supposed to be, Lord God, not what we have made it, but what you made it. Praise you, Jesus. And Father, I pray, Lord God, that that you would remember each and every one of them, and remember our dear sisters as well, Lord God. And Father, in their time of waiting, in their time of sorrow, yes, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that you will come alongside them, comforting them by the Holy Spirit. Amen. For your word says that. You are close to the brokenhearted and those who are contrite in spirit. Thank you, Lord. And I pray you will bring healing. You will be their husbands, mm. Father, in this time of waiting. Yes, Lord. You will, Father, you will speak to them in the yes, night. You Lord. will speak to them through your word. You will speak to Give them in them prayer. That are tender. And in all places, Lord God, and said, I am flesh, with you. On my rod and my Shut staff comfort you. Heart, and surely... Goodness and mercy Jesus. shall follow you all the days of your life. Yes, Lord. And you shall dwell forever in the house of the Lord. And Lord, that is what it means for us to put our foundation, our personal foundations on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank you, Father. We thank you that Jesus we are yours, name. Lord. And that Jesus you will not name. allow us to slip from your hands. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for all of this thank and what you, you've been Jesus. teaching us about husbands and wives. And I pray, Lord, that we will put this into practice. That your will be done in all of our marriages. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And Father, I pray as well, Lord God, that you would remove the labels that have been placed on men today. Those labels that were passed down from fathers, Lord, who spoke into their lives, Lord, that were not good examples. Yes, Lord. Those labels, Lord, where they think they're not good enough or where, you know, they, sh they shouldn't cry they need to toughen up they need to you know all these labels that they have to try and rise above and climb over lord jesus help them to see that they're made in your image that they are wonderfully created lord to be strong in you thank you lord lord jesus remove these labels and these examples lord that were set and words spoken over them lord Lord God, in Jesus' name, I pray you break that off of yes, their lives. Lord. They yes, would Lord. be who you call them to be, who your word says. Lord, they should be. Yes, in Lord. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks for joining us again today. Hallelujah. Talking about husbands. Again, I mm. thought I could get through it today, but you know me. <laughs> or do you? Do you know me? I think I do. <laughs> tomorrow we're gonna well, whenever he starts off with okay today we're gonna get through this always no okay it's gonna be in two or three parts and whenever, he could prove me, he could prove me, prove me wrong and whenever she says i have a short teaching today i know i'm going to be sitting here for <laughs> an hour so and a half true. that's so true you're right <laughs> good answer <laughs> We'll finish this tomorrow and the round table on Friday. Thank you, dear branches. We love you. We love you, we love you all. <laughs> all right. Great. Mm -hmm. Good night. Bye bye. Have a great day. Good night. Good night. You said good night. I, I don't know. Have a great day. Well, for some it is good night, I uh, guess. Maybe. <laughs> anyway. Till tomorrow. Yep. Love bye. you all. Love you all.